So before I jump straight into this, I figured I'd give y'all a little backstory. So I believe it was this past Sunday, Brother Bob came up to me in his typical Brother Bob self and (laughs) stared me down and said, you have the last devotional of the year, and then just walked off. (laughs) (laughs) So that got me to thinking about, you know, New Year, people typically come together and celebrate, and people choose to do usually one of two things. They either choose to remember the past year and reminisce in it, or they choose to completely forget what happened and move on. And so I was, you know, chewing on that, um, and it got me to thinking, what does God call us to remember and to forget throughout Scripture? Um, So I'm just going to be going through these verses kind of quickly, so don't feel the need to turn to all of them, because you'll be going from Genesis chapter 3 all the way to, I believe, Hebrews. So, Um, So first off, God calls us to remember our past and where we came from in light of what God has turned us into. Um, Ephesians 2, 11 through 13 says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And this might be a little bit confusing because you're like, God's turned me into this new creation. Why would he want me to think about what I was before? But if you look at it and think what I started out as, this you know unwanted, sinful nothing, and compared that to what God's turned us into, literally adopted sons of God, it's it makes it the change that much more glorious and that much more powerful. Um, Second, God calls us to remember the consequences of putting our hand to the plow and turning back. In Luke 17, 32, he gives us, Christ gives us a simple command, remember Lot's wife. And as we all know, Lot's wife, as she, she was already out of the destruction of the city, but she turned around and that was what cost her her life. And we, we need to keep this in mind because if we do that, if we look back, it's, it's never good. If we look back, not remembering what we were in order to look at what God's turned us into, but look back thinking like the Israelites did, what I had back then was so great. They talked about the, the foods back in Egypt and how great they had it compared to the desert. But if we look back and think, you know, I miss what I used to be allowed to do without you know, thinking about the consequences of it. It's detrimental to our faith. Next, God calls us to remember his works and his promises. First Chronicles 16, 11 through 15 says, Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And I feel like we too often forget what God's done for us. We get caught up in this kind of monotonous everyday life. You know, you you do your due diligence, go to church on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, and then forget that God's done something that is impossible with man, and that he's turned us into a new creation. Next, God calls us to remember his words and his law. Um, Psalm 119 is full of examples. Just every verse mentions some form of God's word or law. Um, Psalm 119 verse 16 says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Um, It's like it says in Proverbs about taking God's law and tying it around your neck, keeping it with you all the time. Um, And Lastly, God calls us to forget the things that were behind and look forward to the things to come. Um, In Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And like I said before, you know, remember what you were before 
but don't look back. Keep looking towards the cross and what Christ has done for you. And so after going through what God calls us to remember, I got to thinking, what does God say he remembers and he forgets? And I'm going to go through what he remembers first because what he forgets, I feel like is one of the most powerful things in all of scripture. Uh, First, God remembers the sins of the unrepentant. In Hosea chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, it says, When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about there before my face. And the, the unrepentant never think about this, that the God who made them, even though he doesn't, you know, put our sins against us because we believe on him in the name of his son, but he remembers every single little white lie they told, every single time they took something that wasn't theirs, and it adds up, and it's going to cost them more than they could ever imagine. Next, God remembers what we came from and how insignificant we are in light of his glory. Um, in Psalm 103, it's a, an interesting psalm. It's about, I'd say about 20 verses or so, maybe 25. In verses 1 through 13, it's a psalm of David, and he talks about God's loving kindness towards man and his mercy towards us and just goes on and on about how kind he's been to those who call on his name. But then in verse 14, verses 14 through 16, he kind of changes gears and says, For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know, know it no more. And that's something that really hit me hard when I was going through the psalm, is that because God knows what we are, he loves us. Because he knows that we're nothing but dust and that we can do nothing without him, he loves us. And this psalm's going to come up again later on. And that's the that's the great thing about what God remembers and forgets. Um, Next, God remembers his promises towards us. Um, In Psalm 105, um, it kind of gives a summary of um, the Israelites' history, starting with Abraham and going through um, their wandering in the wilderness. In verse 8, um, it says, He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And then again in verse 42, it says, For he remembered his holy promise, and Abram his servant. And this is something that it's been a, a piece to me, is that God never forgets the promises he made. And he never breaks the promises he made, even though we can break our promises a thousand times, both to, to man and to God. Every single promise God makes, he keeps. And he wants us to remember that. He wants us to know that when he says he'll never leave us or forsake us, that we know that he'll never leave us or forsake us. Another thing that I love about um, this verse, verse 42 in Psalm 105, is that it says that he not only remembered his promise, but he remembered Abraham, his servant. And that's kind of the segue into my next point, is that God remembers his people. Even like... um, it was either Elijah or Elisha when they're like, I'm the only one left. They've killed every other follower of God. And then God shows him, you know, he's not in the, the rushing mighty wind. He's not in the fire. He's not in the earthquake. But in that still small voice and in that quiet moment, he comes to him and says, I have thousands of others that haven't bowed the knee. Um, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. Um, Genesis 19.29 says, And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Um, Genesis chapter 30 verse 22 says, And God remembered Rachel and hearkened to her and opened her womb. And this verse about God remembering Rachel is something that I love, is that Rachel wasn't you know, a great patriarch. She wasn't some, you know, super saint. She was the wife of a patriarch, but she wasn't, you know, in the spotlight of, you know, God's direct um, communication with man, but he still remembers her, and he still remembers every single one of his saints. 
Um, next, God remembers his people's labor. Hebrews chapter 6, 10 says, For God is not righteous to forget, not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And that's something that I love is that even when it seems like over and over and over again, you know, you show kindness to someone, they turn around and, you know, stab you in the back. It's like, what's the point? It's like in that psalm where um, he says, my feet had almost slipped. I saw the unrighteous and they were, they had it great. They had everything they ever wanted. And here we are following God. And it's like over and over and over again, nothing works out. But God remembers every little good deed you do. Every time you follow him when everyone else says, no, do this, he remembers it. And it's, it's amazing that he remembers everything except for one thing. This is the only time I could find that God says he specifically forgets something. And it's, it's amazing. Psalm 103 verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. I couldn't find anywhere where God forgets except for here. Is that the sins of the righteous he forgets. And there's a song by a popular Christian band where the singer's saying, can you show me how far the east is from the west? And he says it's from one scarred hand to the other. And I love that. Hebrews 10, 6, uh, 16 and 17 says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just, it shows his overwhelming love towards us, that he remembers the sins of the unrepentant, but those who follow him, he completely wipes away their sins makes us white as snow it's just I can't even comprehend it you know we someone does something 20 years back to us that doesn't matter it was a little you know shouldn't have happened but it did you know but we remember it we bring it up but God doesn't do that even when we nailed his son to the cross and yelled crucify him if we believe in his name, he says, it's gone. Never happened. And I just love that. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for forgetting our sins. Yeah.